During our research, we have stumbled across countless legends and accounts from history which tell of ancient giants. Not only legends, but photographic evidence and an equal amount of initial newspaper reports of their discovery. This often accompanied with the mention of the Smithsonian Institute's insatiable interest in such finds and then an inevitable erasure of said finds from future research. Rarely has an ancient giant been allegedly found, with the remains seemingly slipping the net of said institute's attention, making it into mainstream research and an ally's collection before the Smithsonian was able to make said discovery vanish from history. Captua being one of these particular finds, which not only matches the initial claims, but has remained in mainstream historical research. Tales of a two-headed, 11-foot-tall giant are not only corroborated by photographic evidence, but the actual mummified corpse of the giant himself. The initial discovery of this incredible being was made back in 1673, an ogre or two-headed giant is said to have assaulted a party of Spanish sailors, who fortunately overcame said giant with cunning. After trapping the giant, the sailors planned on killing it, fearing repercussions if released. The cause of the giant's death, however, has long been debated, but what cannot be denied is the astonishing remains which eventually made their way to London. The mummy then vanishes from the history books for nearly 400 years, reappearing in 1914 on the shores of the Burnbeck Harbor in the UK. The mummy inevitably became an extremely popular attraction, with people traveling from thousands of miles away to come and peer at this once monstrous two-headed giant. It remained in the public eye until 1959, a rare exhibit which escaped the clutches of those who would wish to hide it with many photographs and other research projects allowed to be undertaken on the giant's remains by Lord Howard. This incredible giant, thanks to the Lord's dedication to said curiosity, remains in existence within the public's domain. An undeniable verification of a lost race of giants, which we have long claimed to have had first-hand experience of in their past discovery. A magnificent 3-meter-tall mummified corpse of an ancient giant does indeed exist, and due to its age and primitive technologies available to said claimed sailors, when initially discovered, the possibility of it being an elaborate stitched-together hoax has been seemingly debunked, but also ignored by mainstream media due to the controversial nature of said finds. Who was Captois? Was he part of a race of beings in Patagonia, a race we have merely seen these remains of? Is the corpse authentic? If not, how is he constructed to such an astonishing detail so far back in history? Cap Dois is undoubtedly highly compelling. The Nubian Pyramids, a series of hundreds of pyramidal structures and ruins, making up part of the ancient cities of Kush and Meroe. The structures incorporate styles from many different, equally ancient ruins from around the world, displaying to all the reach of this once global civilization. The first recorded settlers in this part of Sudan date back as far as 300,000 years, with the civilization that is claimed to have built and indeed painted these structures are dated as far back as 4,000 years. The city of Kush is renowned for having the finest pottery in all the Nile Valley evidence of the builders' past capabilities. Yet what we found the most interesting about the ruins is a decorative piece found within one of these ancient structures within the ancient city of Meroe, amongst over 200 sandstone pyramids. A depiction can be found within a rather peculiar mural. Like that of the ancient depictions of Gilgamesh, repeatedly showing carrying an adult male lion like a kitten. This image, in fact, shows an ancient giant carrying an elephant in each hand. 
And although this is clearly a remarkable detail, it is not the only features of note that are to be found within the picture. First brought to the attention of mainstream study in 1821 by the French mineralogist Frédéric Caillou, it has since been noted that the giant's features were seemingly Caucasian in appearance, with his hair a light red in color, something we have touched upon in the past with witness testimonies of ancient remains of red-headed giants being reportedly found worldwide, in particular Lovelock Cave. Thus, one wonders, could this be a true depiction of not only the builders of the Nubian pyramids, but possibly Giza's Great Pyramids and the many other either publicly studied or covered up structures found around the world? It is a possibility which we find incredibly compelling. We have previously covered the astonishing ancient fort known as Sagiria that can be found within Sri Lanka, an ancient sanctuary once constructed atop an enormous geological feature. Such an incredible feat in architectural engineering is clearly testament to our distant ancestors' past capabilities. With an entire ancient settlement once constructed around its base, this ancient fort provided such high levels of security, it would have been an obvious choice for re-inhabitation. These re-inhabitations, as mentioned before, would have allowed for these ancient people to have prospered and thus successfully leave their mark upon history. However, these more modern lodgers have been attributed as the builders of said sites, regardless of any explanation as to how remaining absent. Another of these intriguing forts is known as Harihar Fort. Found within India, this ancient fort also displays many of the telltale signs we often look for to indicate whether an ancient ruin is actually far older than modern academia are claiming, with a staircase once effortlessly and precisely cut into the sheer rock face, intriguingly absent a support brace that was once also attached to the rock face. Atop the fort, numerous caverns once carved out of the formation along with a number of ancient stone structures that, although we feel were also left by lost civilization, were possibly left by a later inhabitation than the original construction. This hypothesis being based upon the levels of erosion witnessed upon the stairways, compared to the much better condition of these surviving mortarless structures atop. Indeed, although the stairway has all but eroded away in some areas, and experienced heavy erosion everywhere else, the stone structures found atop the fort, due to their considerably better condition, we feel were seemingly built much more recently, yet still containing a level of build precision our more recent ancestors were lacking. Regardless of the extreme erosion present at the fort, along with the precision ancient masonry found atop, according to academia, Harihar Fort was built during the Pankaj Pancharya period a mere 400 years ago. Who built these astonishing ancient forts within ancient India? When were they built? How did they build them? With so many unexplained anomalies, along with the vast array of academic contradictions, we find Harihar Fort highly compelling.